on. Let's put our hands together today, Lord. We are here, and we are in the first of July. I don't know about y'all. I'm ready to celebrate. Come on, y'all. Choir, stand on up. Ready to celebrate. Remember, y'all know that it is half the year done. Half our year of 2022 is already done. Can you believe it? We're getting ready to roll into the last half of this year and I don't know what your plans were or your resolutions are but time moves so fast you ought to get on it so whatever your plans were when January started if you haven't started to do those things now it's a good time to think about it before this year is up God is good this morning how many of you know God is good this morning uh, you need to be putting your hands together for that. We want everybody up saying, oh, give thanks. We want to give thanks for God, his son, Jesus, for blessing us and saving our souls this morning. So if you know this, we want you to sing this with us. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. He is so good. He is worthy to be praised. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus will. Jesus will. He'll do whatever he said he was going to do. Jesus will. Yes, he will.
Jesus. We didn't win it on our own. We're no match for Satan. Jesus yeah. has to help us fight our battles. Hallelujah. Sometimes all we have to do is just be still. Yeah. Just be still. Yeah. Including keeping your mouth closed. Yeah. Just be still. Yeah. And see the salvation of the Lord. He'll help you fight your battles. And every victory to win. Hallelujah. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. As I stand on this morning, I'm going to take the personal privilege to say how elated I am to have our first family back, to have our pastor back with us on today. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I kept looking on Facebook looking for a sign that they were back, and I didn't see it. And, but I'm like, I know he's back, and I'm just looking forward to him being here on today. I praise God for seeing Kingston, and I know First Lady is probably trying to get that rest. We women need to get our rest, and I understand it. Praise God, but I'm glad our pastor's back with us today. Excited, looking forward to hearing the word, what thus saith the Lord from my pastor on today. Praise be to God. At this time, it's prayer time in this house. Glory to your name, most high. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We give you the glory, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, which is all due you. For indeed you are worthy. You are almighty, you are just I am that I am. You are alpha, you are omega, you are the first, you are the last, you are the beginning and the end. And everything in between, Lord God, you are just who you are. All wise, all knowing, omnipotent God, you are. You are the author, you are the finisher of our faith, hallelujah. You are the creator, you are the possessor, hallelujah, of this world, Lord God. Anything that is, is because of you, Lord God. 
We are nothing without you. We have nothing without you. We can do nothing without you, Lord God. So we come acknowledging you, Lord, in your majesty. Hallelujah. In your splendor, in your glory, Lord God. We come to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And we bless your holy name. Now, Lord God, we're asking, Lord God, to... Hallelujah. That your presence would reign with us on today, Lord God. That your spirit would be in the midst of us on today, Lord God. That, Lord, in the end, Lord God, someone would come crying, what must I do to be saved? Someone would dedicate their lives, Lord God. Someone, Lord God, who walked in, Lord God, feebling in their body, Lord God, would feel a touch from you, Lord God. Someone who came in heavy laden and burned down, Lord God, would feel lifted up on today, Lord God. Lord, move by your spirit in these services on today, Lord God. Let your perfect will be done. We've come out for no other shape, form, or fashion on today but to give you the glory, to give you the praise, and the honor. Hallelujah. Be blessed by our praise, Lord God. Hallelujah. Now, Lord God, we anticipate a word from the man of God. Crown him with wisdom, Lord God. Anoint him afresh, Lord God. Strengthen him, prop him up on every leaning side, Lord God. But we want to hear what thus saith the Lord from our under shepherd, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. That we don't have itching ears, Lord God. But we want to hear, we want to receive the meat of the word on today, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. That you feed us, Lord God, from your heavenly table, Lord. Lord God, that we may dine, Lord God. Hallelujah. That we may digest your word, Lord God. That we can take your word from here, Lord God, and go out and live it, Lord God in our everyday life. Now we thank you, Lord God, for these services, for this first communion Sunday in July. We thank you for our rites of passage, Lord God. This is our Passover, Lord God, and we take it not lightly. You say, as often as we do it in remembrance of you, and Lord God, we remember what you did for us, Lord God, on the cross, Lord God. How you hung, bled, and you died, Lord God, to take away the sins of the world, Lord God. And we thank you, God. We give you glory, hallelujah. We bless you, Lord God, and we thank you for the morning chapel church, Lord God. Thank you for keeping us, Lord God. Thank you for providing for us, Lord God. Thank you for keeping us together, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God. We praise and we magnify you. We give you the glory, we give you the honor. In the name of Jesus, you're worthy. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Our scripture text it will be found in 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. That 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. And it reads, Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance into Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord war with the prophet that is in Samaria? For he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told the Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is in the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make a lie? That this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent his messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, 
and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Okay. Are not Abana and Farfar rivers of Damascus better than all the rivers of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in his rage. And his servant came near and spoke unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather then, when he said unto thee, Wash and be clean. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like the flesh of little child. And he was Clean. Obedience is the key for the children of God. God. Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together. Let's give God a hand clap of praise in the house this morning. If you feeling good this morning that the Lord allowed you to be on the wake up list and he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. Truly the Lord is good and we are grateful and we are certainly always gracious in his presence as we continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth with this wonderful praise and worship team that continues to bring praises unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we thank God and praise the Lord for his power and for his might. Thank you for your prayers. And um, I just felt the prayers as we were in this eight-day marathon of a general conference and we of course did not finish all of our work because time would not allow us to do all of the the vetting of all of the laws that were proposed but nevertheless we are here as the hymnologist said and are we yet alive to see each other's face and so that's where we are this morning as we prepared to preach the word of the Lord. It's so good to see everybody's faces, I should say familiar faces, uh, this morning as we have been in the midst of thousands of people from all over the country, and uh, we bring back a new quadrennial theme for the next four years uh, that comes out of the Episcopal address that was delivered um, by, for the first time, from a woman. Bishop Teresa E. Jefferson Snorton delivered the Episcopal address. I have it here in print. And then for the next four years, then the new theme for our Zion is to be bold, face now, embrace next, see new. And it comes from Isaiah 43. Amen. And so we are embarking upon the brand new thing and uh, of course as she prepared and read through this entire 26 page um, Episcopal address with a lot of very very relevant kinds of things that our church as we move forward the CME church has to embrace has to adjust has to get rid of some of the old and press forward into the new. And it's going to be very challenging for us because uh, in a real sense, many people have become stuck in where we have been. And so we've got to do some tremendous soul searching morning chapel this morning if we are going to embrace <laughs> this 27 page document and uh, Lady T, God bless you. Good to see you this morning as you are bringing up the rear, so to speak, this morning, trying to get yourself together. Reverend Drew had just called your name, but Lady Tanisha served on the writing team for the Christian Index while she was there. She was one of the writers, and her writings were featured every day. Uh, in the Christian index called the Daily Index. And I think, I hope we can make those um, copies of that possible, Tanisha, for those persons in the congregation because she wrote some tremendous things about the general conference, the operations, and all of the wonderful things that were taking place. And I think that Morning Chapel will be blessed from hearing those things. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Drew. Praise the Lord for standing in. Praise the Lord. And, and we were able to, to check you out a little bit online, Reverend Drew. And um, I thank God and praise the Lord. But I'm going to tell you what my associate uh, minister said this morning. She was so hurried to, to give me back the mantle. And she said, you can have this. <laughs> Please, I was hoping that you would show back up this morning, and I am delighted, praise the Lord, Reverend Drew, for your help, for your assistance, and we were hurrying back from Cincinnati 
Ohio. God bless you. And we'll say more about that as we go forth this week in our various meetings, uh, starting on Tuesday evening, steward board and church conference and all of the other scheduling will be back in place, our Bible studies and so forth. And so we thank God and praise the Lord for his power. Reverend Perry, I heard you online. It's good to hear it online. It's good to hear it. And I said, Reverend Perry, you doing some things. We, we need to keep you a secret. That's what we got to do. <laughs> <laughs> because it sounded very melodious to our ears, to our online audience. We are thankful and we are praising God for those who watch us via social media, Facebook Live and YouTube Live. And you, you, you just don't even know, Morning Chapel, that you are somebody. Amen. Amen. How many people I saw. And that, and all of those thousands of people that say they chime in, they tune in almost weekly to hear these worship services and to hear the Bible study on Wednesday evening. And I was moved and just excited to know. And I said, well, I better go back and do some real digging if all of y'all are looking at it. <laughs> and so we just thank God and praise the Lord. Won't you turn with me this morning to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Now, I'm reading from the New International Version of the Scripture, Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse number 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths or vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your body, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? I want you to bow your head and pray with me. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We praise your name today as we now stand in this place representing you. Move me out of the way so that the real preacher will stand up in this place. His name, his wonderful name is Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord, as I decrease and, Lord, you increase in this place. Do it now with your power and your might, Holy Ghost power. Only what you can do now. It is in the name, the wonderful, matchless name of Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be all acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let every heart shout together, hallelujah. Shout it like you mean it, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God and we... Praise the name of the Lord. In this context of scripture from Matthew chapter 6, there are several problems. The subject that I want to preach from this morning is being possessed by your possessions. Somebody shout, being possessed by your possessions. Being possessed by your possessions. And so many of us, in this context of scripture, Jesus is dealing with possessions. And then he's dealing with, Brother Jefferson, those of us who have a false sense of security about our possessions. We think only of our money, 
We think of our property, we think of our furniture and our clothing and our jewelry, and I didn't even mention our shoes. All of those things that we place particular priority and uh, the Lord is going to bring about some type of sobering statements about possessions. And then not only does he talk about possessions, uh, Sister Fletcher, he talks about those who are possessed, uh, those who somehow or another have made uh, significant kinds of lifetime uh, investments. And although we made lifetime investments, uh, the stock market can be wiped out and our lifetime investments uh, are no more. <laughs> Companies that somehow manage our pension plans and our retirement income uh, can fail overnight and therefore will be wiped out. Uh, a tornado, a hurricane can completely destroy a home and all of its contents. And uh, so it is that Jesus says, uh, do not lay up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth and rust does uh, consume and where thieves break through and steal. And so how do you lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven? And so the answer to that uh, is we learn the art of giving. Somebody shout giving. Now, now listen carefully because this is a paradox because uh, the, the only treasures that we get to keep uh, are those we give away. <laughs> in this narrative because uh, Jesus says it to us. And so the principle of this uh, particular uh, narrative is that uh, our hearts are a movable object. Your heart moves. Your heart, will for wherever you want it to be, that's where your heart is. That's why he said in this scripture, he says, uh, whatever you allow your heart uh, to be, uh, that's what masters you. If, if, if money is your primary focus, then money masters you. Uh, if God is your primary focus, then uh, you allow God to lead you. You allow God to do wonderful things uh, in your life. And some of us are going to say, well, pastor, I, I have a lot of possessions and uh, there's nothing wrong with having a lot of possessions because uh, that's what Jesus said. Uh, but then he turns around uh, and he says, but wait a minute, uh, just suppose uh, your possessions have you. Just suppose. And so Matthew chapter 6 uh, verses 19 through 21 makes a transition in the sermon in the Sermon of the Mount, and in the first chapter, Jesus explains how righteous people practice religion. Now, he addresses the righteous people and uh, how righteous people pray and how righteous people fast. And he talks about this because Jesus had to warn all of his disciples about what we call hypocrisy. Yeah, somebody call somebody shout hypocrisy. Yeah. He, he had to warn them to embrace the, the values of the kingdom. And he says, I, I want you to understand that, that true righteousness transcends uh, religious activity. Yeah. So say, what about those persons? We were in Sunday school this morning, and I came in, I guess, halfway Sunday school, and they somebody was talking about church attendance and how regular we go to church and how often we go to church and how we were trained to go to church uh, and there's nothing wrong with uh, that kind of discipline uh, uh, but if you look at it from the flip side uh, suppose you went to church uh, all of your life uh, but you never became the church <laughs> You, you never became the church. Uh, you just went to the building. Uh, you just went where there were activity and exercises, uh, but your language never changed. Your lifestyle never changed. Uh, the way you treated people never came, uh, never changed. Uh, and so it seemed to me that that would be just a waste of time uh, to go all of your life, uh, but there was no change. Somebody shout, you've got to change. And so really that's what it is because it's a miserable place 
to be around the word, uh, but never allow the word uh, to get inside of you. Uh, it's a miserable life uh, to not see yourself uh, as a disciple of Jesus Christ uh, because we move from membership uh, to discipleship. Uh, we don't just become members of the body of Christ. Uh, we become disciples uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, and when you are a disciple of Jesus, uh, you understand you are a follower of Jesus. Uh, I believe the word of God says uh, that if you want to be a follower, if you want to become one of my disciples, you must deny yourself. Uh, take up your he said, your cross uh, and follow me. Uh, and so it is in these possessions, these possessions uh, in this narrative, uh, money is morally neutral. <laughs> it, it's the attitude toward money that is either godly or evil. Uh, having material possessions uh, is not a sin, uh, but being materialistic is a sin because you have placed your material things above God. And if the Lord allows you to see some sense of financial prosperity, you are blessed. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you are blessed. But if that has caused you not to see God and see yourself, then that same financial prosperity becomes a curse. And so here we must seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and trust that God will take care of your needs. How many of y'all trust God to take care of you? You trust God to take care of you when you're sick. You trust God to take care of you when you don't see a way, you don't know how you're going to make it. You trust God to do all kinds of extraordinary things. And so Jesus says, lay up treasure for yourself. Just make sure you lay it in the right place. Make sure you lay it in the right place because uh, uh, it's not wrong to have possessions, but it's wrong for your possessions to have you. And uh, how can I have possessions uh, without my possessions having me? Uh, well, be careful where your treasure resides. Uh, somebody shout, be careful where your treasure lives. Y'all saying that mighty slow. Be careful where your treasures live. And so verse number 19, let me help you out. Let me lift up this word. Uh, it's an issue of uh, prohibition. He says, uh, do not lay up yourselves treasures on the earth where moth and rust uh, destroy and where thieves break through in and uh, steal. Uh, fine clothes were considered uh, great wealth. Uh, uh, but Jesus says, do not treasure your clothes. <laughs> Why, pastor, did Jesus say that? Because uh, he says, moths will destroy your clothes. <laughs> He says precious metals were considered part of the great wealth. And so he said, well, don't just get so caught up with your Rolex watch. Somebody gave me a Rolex one year. Y'all not going to believe this, Brother Baron. They gave me a Rolex for, for some kind of gift. I think it was a birthday gift. It wasn't here at Morning Chapel, but it, and he told me it was a, a Rolex. Well, I took it to the Rolex store only to find out it was a Folex. Yeah, okay, y'all didn't get that. It was phony. It was not real at all. And I called and I said, hey, did you know this was a phony? He said, well, Pastor, I'm sorry. I thought it was a Rolex. And so I was so, I, I said, oh, my God. Oh my. And so I, I, but I had my mind right because I understood that I could not treasure it. Because if you treasure things, you're going to discover that thieves will break through and steal. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Mud walls cannot keep uh, thieves out of your house. And so uh, verse number 20 is a parallel uh, exhortation because uh, he says, but lay up for yourselves treasures uh, in heaven. The issue is where your treasure resides, the, the location of your treasure, earth or heaven, uh, indicates the character of your treasure, uh, worldly or spiritual, uh, worldliness, materialism, uh, 
covetousness, uh, laying up treasures uh, in heaven means that I trust God. Uh, it means I have a communion with God. Uh, it means that all of my blessings uh, come from God. Uh, how many of y'all know that all your blessings come from the Lord? Uh, all of your blessings uh, come from the Lord. Uh, every time you eat a meal and you don't uh, bow your head uh, and say, Lord, I just thank you for this meal uh, because I know that there are some people who are not eating. Uh, every time I put on clothing, I thank you, Lord, for these clothing because uh, I know that there are some people who do not have clothing. Watch this. Uh, I, Lord, every time I put my shoes on, I, I thank you, Lord, uh, for these shoes uh, because there's some people who are walking barefooted uh, and we don't have to go to a third world country to see that. Uh, we can see that right downtown Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, there's some people who are walking barefooted uh, and so every time you put on your shoes uh, and look at your feet, uh, the first thing that should come from your mouth morning chapel is Lord I thank you. Uh, every time you drink some water, y'all see, y'all take water for granted, but there are some people who are water deprived and food deprived and there are all kind of food deserts uh, in the United States of America. So if you can just eat a marshal of food uh, and take a, a drink uh, of water, uh, you ought to tell God uh, thank you. Somebody shout thank you. Put your hands together, give God some praise. <clears throat> and so we do not treasure the treasures on earth. No, we don't do it because we understand here in this context of scripture, Matthew 16, verse 26, as Jesus says, for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits or loses his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? Watch this. Well, was Jesus really saying something like this? He's saying that money can buy amusement, but money cannot buy joy. He's saying money can buy you a bed, but uh, if you stop by the pharmacy, you'll discover all of the sleep aid medicine is gone off the shelves. Uh, and so that indicates to me that money cannot buy sleep. Money can buy you a whole lot of companions, uh, but money will never buy you true friends. Money can buy a house, but money cannot put peace in that house. Money can buy medication, uh, but money cannot buy health. Money can buy sex, but money cannot buy intimacy. Money can buy therapy, but money cannot buy redemption. And so this is what Jesus is saying because really in a real sense he's talking about a story of a young man who felt like he had it going on and he said in this same pericope he says, well I, I got it going on. I've got everything I need. I've got all things I need, matter of fact, I've got so much. Watch this, Sister Williams. I'm just going to start building barns and bigger barns trying to store up everything that I have. Now, y'all going not y'all not going to like this, Rock Church, but let me tell you what Jesus said to this young man. Somebody shout, he was a young man. He said it like a minute, he was a young man. He was a young man. He, he, he wanted all of the stuff. He possessed all of the stuff. He had the bag. Y'all know they call it the bag. He had the, the bag, which means the money. He had the cash. He had the cars. He had the clothes. He had everything except something. And so Jesus had to point out, well, I know you got the bag. I know you got the clothes. I know you got the, the job. I know you got the retirement. I know you got the security. But what I want to say to you is I want to want you to sell everything you have and give it to the poor. But but let me let me I left out a part because y'all y'all not gonna like it. It's gonna make you feel uncomfortable uh, because uh, Jesus referred to this particular young man as a fool. 
it's, it's in there. He said, thou fool. He said, your soul may be required of you tonight. In other words, all of your bag could be gone tonight. All of your cars could be gone tonight. All of your clothing, all of your stuff could be gone tonight. So stop treasuring your treasures in your heart, but treasure what is in heaven. And so be committed to the treasures that remain, the treasures uh, that remains. And sometimes we get lost uh, in the treasures that are on earth uh, and we negate the treasure that God has already given us. Uh, if God has given you life, uh, you ought to shout hallelujah. If God has given you breath, you ought to shout hallelujah. If God has given you another opportunity to see a day that you've never seen before, you ought to shout I'm glad about it. If God allowed you to have at least one meal for the day, you ought to shout hallelujah. If your children are in good health, you ought to shout thank you, Jesus. If your body is not broken down and you're in good health, somebody said a reasonable portion of health and strength, you ought to say, Lord, I just want to thank you. If you drove in to the worship place this morning, you didn't have an accident. You you didn't have anything uh, to forbid you uh, or hinder you from coming uh, to this place. Uh, you should say, Lord, thank you for my arrival. Uh, it was a safe arrival. Uh, so you missing some stuff uh, because this is what David said. Uh, David said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life uh, and I will dwell in the house uh, of the Lord for." Ever. And so sometimes God has uh, to intrude uh, into our lives. Uh, he has to somehow uh, get in our business. Uh, how many of y'all have, have had God to get all up in your business? Uh, God will get all up in your business. Uh, and he'll say, wait a minute. Uh, wait just uh, one minute, Michaela. Uh, I know you got all of that. Uh, I know you got it going on, uh, Michaela. Uh, but Michaela, don't you miss your shout. Uh, do you remember the time uh, when you cried out to me uh, and I answered your prayers? Uh, do you remember the time uh, when you felt isolated uh, and alone uh, and I'm the one uh, who came to your rescue? Uh, I'm the one uh, who helped you. Uh, watch this, Sue. He said, don't you miss your shout. Don't you become short-sighted. Don't you become bankrupt in your praise. Because some of us are bankrupt in praise. We never give God praise. We never wave our hand. We never open up our mouths. And the Lord told me, Reverend Drew, he said, well, Holly said, I told him in Psalm 150, the last Psalm, I told them, let everything that has breath, let everything, so if you got a mouth up in here, up in here, you got to open up your mouth. I'm not talking about no cute praise. I'm talking about a radical praise. If you feel like dancing, get up out of your seat and just dance. If you want to praise God, don't look at your neighbor to the left. Don't look at your neighbor to the right. Just look up. Look unto the hills from which cometh all of my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. So I'm not going to be preoccupied by my possessions. I'm going to be preoccupied with my praise, preoccupied with my worship. As a matter of fact, let me tell you another thing I looked at as I exegete this text. I said somehow Jesus is saying to us, Brother Freddie, sometimes we are overloaded and we don't know it. We're overloaded. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor you're overloaded. 
You overload it with blessings. You overload it with mercy. You overload it with grace. You overload it with forgiveness. You overload it with all of the things that God has given you. And God says the least you can do is say, Lord, I praise you anyhow. Anyhow. So this is, this is disturbing to me that somehow... The world that we live in has become somehow possessed with our possessions. Jesus talked about it because he talked about it somehow in the context of celebrities who drive these persons who have smart cars and all of the kinds of worldly things uh, around them because uh, the foolish myth is more is better and now is better. That's a myth. The big problem is get more and get it now. That's the world that we live in. And so uh, that's not, nothing wrong with your getting, but there's something wrong uh, with your memory of who gave it to you. There's nothing wrong with you acquiring things, but it seems like to me the more that we acquire, the more distant we become from God because uh, we rely on things as opposed to relying on God. Uh, we rely on the stuff, uh, and the word says that one day uh, the stuff uh, is going to be gone. One day the stuff that you you worship is not uh, going to be here. One day the people that you uh, worship, they're no longer going to be around or they're going to, watch this, they're going to depreciate in value. It's in that text. Depreci somebody shout depreciation. I learned that from just going car shopping. Uh, everybody in here who's ever had to go car shopping. Don't ever go to a car dealership and ask them to finance your car based on uh, the monthly payment. That's a setup. Already have your finances in order before you get there so that you can dictate your situation. No, you're not going to run my credit because I already have my money. If I got my money, what you got to run my credit for? So this is the car I want, and so I already have my money. So you make it fit this car into this particular parameter. Well, now, no, you, you can't do that. Well, I tell you what, I'm just going to go to another place with all of this money. And I guarantee you they're going to change their minds because uh, I don't care what car you drive off of the car lot. Uh, that car, that automobile has already depreciated in value. It's depreciated. And so sometimes we become what is called upside down. Y'all ever heard that term? You, you just drove that car two years. You bought it brand new and you take it back to the dealership and say, oh, I want to trade it. They said, well, you upside down. Oh, Lord, you are driving a car that's worth way less than what you own it. You up, so some of us are in an upside down economy. We have somehow depreciated God and decided that God is just not worth it. And some people have checked out of church because they said, God is just not worth it. They stopped praising. They stopped doing all of those things that we used to do because they say God is just not worth it. But I want you to understand something here in this same context. How important will your car be, the car you have now, how important will that car be about 25 years? years from now. How important will the degree that you earn, the diploma that you earned, uh, how important will it be in about 20 years? That same degree, that same diploma, that same skill. Uh, how important will your career be 100 years from now? Watch this, watch this. Uh, how, how important will your accomplishments be 
be when you are lying in your grave? Uh, how important will those accomplishments be? And I, I know they feel real good to you right now, but uh, when I stand over every person and I say uh, ashes to ashes and uh, dust to dust, uh, accomplishments uh, don't mean a thing. Uh, careers don't mean a thing. Uh, diplomas and degrees uh, don't mean a thing. Uh, houses don't mean a thing. Uh, cars uh, don't mean uh, a thing. Uh, and so Jesus declares the fact uh, of life's losses. Uh, somebody shout, sometimes you're going to lose some things. Sometimes you got to lose some things uh, because look like the more stuff uh, that we acquire, uh, it somehow disconnects us uh, with God. Uh, I believe what Job said, Job said, naked I came uh, from my mother's womb and naked I shall return. The Lord gave uh, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name uh, of the Lord. Uh, and so inevitably reality is uh, that these earthly treasures do not last. Uh, somebody turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it won't last. These earthly treasures uh, are not going to last. Uh, and so the Lord says here for, uh, that if you've been through some tornadoes uh, and you survived, uh, if you've been through some hurricanes, uh, earthquakes, uh, floods, uh, and you survived, uh, if you made it through a pandemic uh, and ducked uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, uh, and you survived, uh, those were the thieves uh, that were breaking in. Uh, and you still Still standing, uh, you ought to look up toward heaven uh, and say, Lord, I just want to thank you for survival. Uh, I want to thank you for life uh, because when the thieves uh, broke in and stole, uh, they did not take me out. Uh, and so God is saying to us, uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, that you've got to trust him. Uh, somebody shall trust God. you got to trust God uh, beyond the shadow uh, of a doubt. Uh, God called Abraham uh, away from his family and homeland uh, to walk with him and to talk with him. Uh, and Abraham trusted God and uh, he obeyed God. Uh, but after years of following God, uh, Abraham still did not have a son and his uh, wife Sarah was barren and uh, an old man uh, was here at that time but Sarah devised a plan where Abraham would have a son uh, through her maid Hagar before it was uh, too late uh, but Abraham uh, Yes, uh, trusted God. Uh, let me ask you a question, my brothers and sisters. Uh, do you really trust God? Do you really trust God? Uh, even when it seems like God is uh, attending to everybody else's needs uh, and he's not meeting uh, your needs, uh, do you really trust God? Uh, God. If anything in this world uh, is everything to you, uh, it means that you uh, trust uh, God. Uh, I believe it was Fanny J. Crosby who pinned to him, uh, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, uh, to the cross where thou hast died. Uh, draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, uh, to thy precious uh, bleeding uh, side. Uh, I, I, I discovered my brothers and sisters, uh, you can build uh, houses. Uh, you can build great cathedrals, uh, large and small. Uh, that's what Raymond Raspberry said. Uh, you can build skyscrapers, uh, grand uh, and tall. Uh, you can conquer all of the failures uh, of the past. Uh, but, but I like what he said in the vamp. Uh, he said, but only what you do uh, for Christ shall last. Uh, remember only what you do for Christ will last. Somebody shout only. Shout only. You may seek earthly power and fame. The world might be impressed by your great name. Soon the glories of this life will all be past. But only what you do for Christ 
realize that there's another song. It's an old song. It says, may the work I've done speak for me. How many of y'all want the work you've done to speak for you? If you've done anything on this earth, let it speak for you. If you help somebody as you passed along the way, let it speak for you because only what you do for Christ will last. There's another hymn right here. It's by Frank Houston. He said it pays to serve Jesus. The service of the Lord. How many of y'all are serving the Lord? How many of y'all are serving the Lord? He said it pays it pays to serve Jesus every day. It pays to serve him every step of the way. Though the pathway of glory may sometimes get you weary, you'll be happy every step of the way. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. How many of y'all woke up this morning with your mind stayed on Jesus? Not your possessions, not your bag, not your career, not your diploma, not your status, uh, not your economics, uh, but Jesus, uh, if it had not been, if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, uh, where would you be? Uh, I dare to tell your neighbor, uh, if it had not been for God, you don't know uh, where you would be. Uh, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that God protected me. I'm so glad that God healed my body. I'm so glad that he picked me up. How many of y'all know God pick you up? Y'all acting like y'all don't know God. I'm talking about people that know God. You've experienced God. You know that it wasn't by your might. It wasn't by your strength. It wasn't by your power. But it was God. Put one thing up just like this. It was God. It was God, Brother Freddy, who gave you strength. It was God, Acacia, who gave you strength. Sometimes we just don't understand. I serve. I serve a living Savior. I serve a God who's able to do all things. How many of y'all know the God you serve can do all things? He can do anything. He can do everything. The God you serve, I dare you to pray to him. I dare you to praise him. I double dog dare you to worship his name. And every now and then, you want to get your shout on, get your praise on. You want to shout, shout, shout. You want to come in church with your hands up. Glory, glory. Thank you. Hallelujah. All I need is about three or four people to stand on your feet and give God some praise for who he is in your life, for what he's done in your life. Don't you get it twisted? It was God. Don't you become short-sighted? It was God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey! 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 Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus, for healing. 
shake my body. Thank you, Jesus, for sustaining me. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hey! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! If you will, he'll pick you up. If you've got pain in your body, he will heal your body by his stripes. You were healed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Maybe there are some unanswered prayers. Maybe there are some things you've already given to God, but God has not answered yet. But he says, don't be weary. Do not be weary. I'm still able to do all things. Even for those of us who are grieving, God says he brings comfort. Isaiah 40 says, comfort ye. Comfort ye, my people, saith the Lord. And so we speak comfort to all persons today who need comfort. There are a lot of people that you won't know because they wear real cute clothes. They wear real cute clothing. They look good on the outside. But there's some stuff going on on the inside. But God says that he's able. He's able to do it for you. Just do not become preoccupied with your possessions, but become preoccupied with praise, with worship, with faith, with God's sustainability in your life. He'll do it for you. Maybe there are persons here today who need prayer. Now, I would never be ashamed of prayer. I wouldn't because everybody needs prayer. I don't care who you are. Even the person who does not acknowledge it, it doesn't mean that you don't need it. <laughs> it just means that you're unwilling to acknowledge it. But I'm, I stand here today as a preacher and a prophet from God that God is waiting on you. You're not necessarily waiting on God. He says he's waiting on you to make your move. He's waiting on you to get rid of your pride and replace your pride with humility. He's waiting on you to praise him as opposed to keeping your mouth closed and not saying anything after he's done all of these marvelous, wondrous things in your life and you're still sitting like a bump on a log and expecting God to be a magical genie in a bottle and God is saying, I'm not in your bottle. I've already broken out of that place. I just need for you to break out of that place that you're in right now. And I don't know, I know that Sister Strong's brother uh, transitioned a few days ago. I do know that. James Arthur King, I know he transitioned. And so I've been praying for her and others perhaps who, who are sick. I do know that Sister Coleman is always dealing with some sense of pain and discomfort in her body. And so I'm always continually praying for her because I know that she knows God. She continues to praise God. I, I, I pray for twin. I, I know twin has been through some stuff and all of us in here, who, how many of y'all have been through some stuff? Y'all y'all been through, okay, y'all, okay. I'm going to raise both of my hands. Has been through some stuff. But God is sustaining us. In the midst of the stuff, God. And so if you just if you just need to come before we extend the invitation, if you just need to come and say, Lord, I 
just want to fall prostrate before you. I just want to kneel in your presence. Now, now is your opportunity. I know we got communion today, but last time I checked, there no, there's not a number of the times you can come to the altar. <laughs> you, you can come as many times as you need to come. <laughs> yes. So you can come and kneel before him and say, Lord, I, I need you. Come with the praise on your lips. Come with your hands raised up. Come worshiping and thanking him. In advance. Just come and kneel in his presence. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He'll grant it to you right now. Even while you are praying. God knows how to do it. While you're praying. Thank you Lord. We decree it done. In the name in the name of Jesus. If you got some things going on in your home, God knows how to work those things out. If you got things going on in your own body, he knows how to work it out. Whatever you've got going on in your body right now, your spirit, God knows how to do it right now. In the name of Jesus. My, my, my. Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 My God. My God is an awesome God. He reigns. From heaven above. Yes, he does, my God. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Bless your people, Lord. Bless your people, Lord. Heal your people, Lord. Sustain your people, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Restore your people right now in the name of Jesus. Restore. Oh, restore your people. Oh, Lord Jesus. Mm. My God, my God, my God. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Oh, Lord. You ought to give him a shout. Give him a praise. Praise in the atmosphere. Praise. I'm just going to wave my hand to God and tell him thank you for all of the blessings, all of the protection, all of his kindness, all of his goodness, all of his mercy, how he kept you. Jesus. How he kept you. Jesus. God kept me. God kept me. God kept you. He keeps all blessing. Jesus. In the name. In the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus, the matchless name of Jesus, the powerful name of Jesus, uh, the anointed name of Jesus. Just call on his name. I dare you to shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout his name right now. Rock Church, uh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus. Just keep crying out to him. Keep crying out to him. Keep crying out to him. 
keep crying out to him. Oh, Lord, Jesus, I'm just going to keep crying out. I dare you to cry out to him. Wave your hands and just shout thank you. Yes. Jesus. Put your hands together, give God praise. Give him praise right now. He's in the atmosphere. His presence, his power, his might is here. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. We are preparing. Preparing for the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank you. We praise the name of the Lord. Just cry it out to the Lord. Whatever it don't, do not be ashamed to cry it out. Cry out to the Lord right now and allow him to respond to your cry. He'll respond to it. In the very back of your hymn book, 609, Reverend Drew, thank you. In the back of your hymn book, 609, and we will pray the prayer of general confession in the presence of the Lord. Prayer of general confession, that means all of us pray this prayer together as our own confession unto God prior to receiving these sacraments. Praise the Lord. Let us pray this prayer together. It's in very bold print on the back of your hymnal 609. Let's pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail thy manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them must grieve us unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Merce, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may hereafter serve thee in the newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy did it, thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And, and, and did institute in his holy gospel, commanded us, to continue a perpetual memory of that his most precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee and grant that we receiving thy, these thy creatures of bread and wine according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution in remembrance of his death and passion may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
Likewise, after supper, they took the cup. And when they had given thanks, he said unto them, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Let every heart shout together, Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Reverend Drew is coming and I'm coming to now serve you. Ushers come and assist us as we prepare to partake of the, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Little now, I'll take this side. Reverend Drew is going to take that side over there. Yes. All right. This side will stand and face the wall. Go to the rear. Start from the back. Start from the rear. Go to the wall. And come. Take your take your sacrament, begin to open it. The bread is on the top, and of course the juice is on the bottom. Those of you who are online and you have your own bread and you have your own juice, won't you partake it with us? up and drink it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Prayerfully, everyone has been, has been served. If you haven't been served, just let us know and we'll be more than happy to serve you today. Praise the Lord. Lord. 
we're ready to give as God has blessed us to give and if you have your gifts with you those persons who are giving online through easy tithe we thank God for for all of you who continue to give through our online giving and um, and those of you who are in the sanctuary uh, brother Jefferson if you don't mind uh, passing the trays so that we can receive your gifts fill out an offering envelope if you don't have one raise your hand we'll get one for you and uh, we will receive your gift as unto the Lord remember these are not your possessions this is what God has blessed you with don't worship the gift worship the giver the giver of the gift he's blessed you with him continue to give unto God as he has already given unto you God bless you and give him praise don't become short sighted about it praise the name of the Lord God bless you hallelujah, hallelujah. Reverend Drew come in bless you all Father God, we thank you for the gifts. We thank you for the givers, Lord God. Now we pray, Lord God, that you would just take this seed that's been sown, Lord God, and that you would multiply it 100 fold, Lord God, for the advancement of the kingdom, Lord God. Hallelujah. We give you glory, praise, and honor in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank God and praise the Lord for those of you who thought it not robbery to come to worship this morning. And also those persons who are worshiping via online. We thank God and praise the Lord for all of you. Our visiting friends who come through uh, every once in a while just to peep in and visit. We thank God for all of you and I encourage you to share a comment share the page share the message on your page maybe it will be of some ministry to someone else someone else needs to hear a word from the lord prayerfully you will continue to have a blessed weekend as fourth of july will be acknowledged on tomorrow and so we pray that everyone will have a wonderful fourth of july holiday independence day uh, tomorrow and then on Tuesday, we will be back to, to business with our noonday Bible study and also our steward board meeting and church leadership, church conference meeting. And steward board is at 6 and church conference is at 7. And we were off last month because I had a whole lot of stuff going on, but we are back on for this month and we're closer to the annual conference now annual conference is coming up the first week in august and so of course there are matters that we need to take care of as it relates to that and um, all of the other church related matters and so let's do that and so we need for you to be on zoom and um, we will certainly appreciate it thank all of you for all that you continue to do in the body of Christ and you're going to hear some things going forth um, some of them you're going to hear from this book this address as we prepare and begin to embrace being bold facing the now embracing the next and seeing new and all of it has been unpacked in this 27 pages in terms of what all of our churches should be doing around the world and um, and I thank God for Morning Chapel being that kind of church that had that will grasp the vision and spring forward with the vision thank you very much thank you stewardess for your work and your service and preparing the table of the Lord as you do every first Sunday God bless you is our prayer may the Lord bless you 
and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the Lord be gracious unto you as you go forth and not allow your or our possessions to possess us but rather to give praise to the giver of every good and perfect gift from above. We thank you and we praise your name. It is in the name, the matchless name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord.